I am uh, super, super excited this morning. Just really am. Um, I told Ashley before uh, they came up, I said, people are either going to strap on their seatbelts this morning and hope that they can ride through this, or they'll think that I'm just crazy enough that I might join in and believe what he's saying. I, I'm, I'm very excited, like I said, about this morning. Spiritually, properly pronouncing, Happy Dad's Day. Um, my wife made this shirt for me. There's only one father, and he's on the top there. That's who I serve, and uh, I'm happy to share with you this morning this message. I, I believe that I have to, to, to say this first. I think that sometimes we just get in such a rhythm of church and especially during the summer that we're just in almost in a season, I would say almost kind of flat, that I'm just not really going anywhere. It's kind of stagnant. I'm just good with where I'm at. It's not really that I'm growing or moving and nothing's really happening. You know, I, I tell you, in, in my life, I've been in seasons like that. You know, I, I think back on my athletic career. Uh, through, through my athletic career in my life, I, I, I tell you, I've been on all kinds of different teams. Teams that were the dream teams with all-stars that won it all and never lost a game. Teams that never won a game. You know, I, I was thinking this morning as I was riding over here, I remember this one time in, in elementary school, our team was so bad we had kids on our team that couldn't catch the ball. And the only way that they could catch the basketball is if you threw it directly at their face. They would at least were smart enough to protect their face so that they would catch the basketball. But that's a whole different story. But so all, through my life, I've been a part of all these different teams. You know, I've been to teams that were, you know, underdogs and overachieved. I've been a part of teams that should have achieved more than they did. You know, and, and, uh, in football, I was fortunate enough to be a part of a pretty, pretty successful and winning program as I moved through my years. And that became accustomed to how I live my life. And uh, I know Kevin has shared that many a times. I just was very passionate about the game of football and, and how it was supposed to be played. And you were supposed to give everything that you had and prepare in the best way possible. And, and as I, I, I did that, I, I remember graduating high school and going from a very successful program to a program that was rebuilding. And in my freshman year of college, we went three and seven. And I remember about halfway through the season, I had to ask myself, is this how it's going to be? And that brings us back to the question that we've started with in this series, why me? How long is this going to go on? How difficult is this going to be? Is this the season that's going to continue to be and continue to be? Is this what my career, is this what my life is going to be like at this point in time? If so, God, why me? What about you? Are you in a season right now where you feel that it doesn't seem like it's going to end? That I'm going through this and, and, and it doesn't really seem to have much hope. It doesn't seem to have much victory to it. You know, I couldn't get I couldn't get the image of a man, I don't know who, just, just a man, that night after night, he keeps going to the bar, and he keeps emptying a bottle, and emptying a bottle. And because of some bad circumstances that he's been dealt, he keeps asking himself, why me? Is this is what my life, is this what my life is going to be like? How long am I going to have to go through this? For those of you that are dealing with an Ill, illness or, or, or battling cancer, is there a point in time in your chemo where you say, how long is this going to go on? Why me? Why is this so difficult? I wish my child would just come back and know the Lord. How long am I going to have to continue to go on in this type of pattern? 
And folks, if, if I can just be real with you today, I just want to speak from my heart. All I did was read the chapter uh, of 1 Peter and, and, and pray this week. You know, a lot of times I'll spend time in commentaries and reading other books. All I did was pray and read the chapter and say, God, what is it that you want me to say? And I just want to share my heart with you this morning. And I think that's part of the reason that I'm so excited because this morning is about hope. It's about something that is not only yet to be, but something that we can experience right now. And there was two words that continue to be mentioned in the first chapter of 1 Peter, hope and faith. But see, it doesn't directly come out and always say hope. It says words like look forward, or you should be looking, or you should be moving. And that's what I'm saying this morning. I'm so excited. I told Pastor Kevin before the service, I said, I think that this can truly be a special day in kingdom's history because of hope. See, I believe that as we go forward in this today, that your summer will no longer be the same. I pray that as we go out of here today, when we leave, people will say, man, you should have been at church Sunday. See, I think a lot of times the pattern of attendance changes in Sunday, and it's not just in one church, it's in all churches. But what I'm saying is through the message of hope this morning, there's the ability for God to change your summer that it would never be the same because of hope. And I'm hoping that as we go through this, you get excited as well. See, as I stand up here, and oftentimes as pastors stand up here and preach, sometimes we feel like we're on an island. (laughs) And we're hoping that you're getting what I'm saying. Guys, if I can just be honest for a second. It is so encouraging to hear Mark Gump say amen, or hear somebody else in the audience say amen, or that speaks to me, or just to hear that the word of God is penetrating your heart, or you're getting something out of this, because this is something that we're in together. Today's message is called Excited for Home. This is the thesis for this morning. This is not our home. We are temporary residents in this land, but we are chosen by God and made holy by the Spirit of God, looking forward to Jesus' return as, a, as his obedient children, moving forward rather than backsliding into our own ways, living holy by dedicating and devoting our lives as Christ demonstrated for us. As we look, move, and live, we eagerly expect our eternal rest, and we are excited for home. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer before we read the scriptures this morning? I feel led to pray. God, I know that these words that we're about to read from your holy word light the path this morning, Lord. And Lord, I'm believing that, that as we move through this this morning, Lord, that the excitement will increase in this place, God, that there will be a hope where there was no hope. Lord, that lives will be changed, God. Lord, I pray that we would not put a limit on who you are or what you could do. Lord, that we would allow you to have your way in this place. Lord, as we break into your word today, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Our reading today comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 17. This will be the foundation as we move through this this morning. So prepare your minds for action. In other versions, that first line right there, it says, prepare so that your minds would think clearly. Prepare your minds for actions and self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Hope, so key this morning. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything that you do, just as God who chose you 
is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge and reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. That's why I say in the beginning, this is not our home. That's the hope that, 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 all, that you, all that we're going through is temporary because we're in temporary placement, almost like a holding until we go to where we're actually supposed to live, a home that is so much better than we can ever imagine. And see, we have hope this morning because that exists. As Pastor Kevin prayed, that it's through the way of the cross that we have hope that we have victory in Jesus Christ this morning. You know, I feel led for some reason right now. If you're watching online, would you, would you do me a favor? Because see, I think, there's, I think there's a new hope arising. Would you click right below you and share this message right now? Because I believe that somewhere, someone is sitting in front of a computer screen this morning that needs hope. And they might scroll across this and just might say, maybe this pastor might have something to say that might add hope to my situation. And I believe that in that process, in that process, by watching that and gaining a little hope, that they might turn to that dusty Bible that may be sitting somewhere in their house and begin to read and somehow find Jesus Christ in the way of the cross and find hope in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you would share right now, I believe that someone's faith will change today, whether they're in this building or watching somewhere else or yet to be watching. It's by hope that we are changed, that we follow the way of the cross. Such a beautiful passage here this morning. And as I said, I want to speak from my heart as we go through this. I, I, I hope that as we go through this in the next couple weeks that you will um, read along with me. I'm going to be going through for the book of First Peter, and obviously we'll finish up chapter one today and probably start into to two next week. Um, but there was three words that came to my mind that I think we can really take away from this today as we go forward in it. And the three words were this, look, move, live. Look, move, and live. The first one is the look. How are we looking? How are we looking? I'm hoping that we're looking forward, looking forward. As you see this picture here, that is my beautiful daughter. I had to Throw that up there. <laughs> the reason I throw that up there is because in the statement that I'm making, look forward to this hope, right? To look forward, I try to get my daughter's attention, okay? She's three weeks and three days this morning. I'm talking to her, and she has no concept of, of focus or looking forward. Her eyes are literally everywhere. And I think sometimes in the infancy of our walk with Christ, our eyes are literally everywhere. It's very hard for us to focus. So what I'm saying is, is what has to happen for us to look forward to the hope, the first step is what direction are you looking? What direction are we looking? Are we looking towards Christ? And I'm hoping that as we move through this this morning, at least we can change our gaze to look at him, to fix our eyes on the things that are yet to be seen, looking in a direction that reveals who he is. Friday, I was, uh, I was coming to lead prayer, and there was, a, there was a fog that was beginning to lift. And there was, the sunlight was starting to break through and, and shine in in my vehicle. And it was such a beautiful thing because I think that oftentimes when we're living in a fog, it's hard to see the light. But when we choose to be faithful and we choose to hold on to hope that's there, it's funny how the fog of our life can begin to lift and the light of Christ can begin to pour in. There's hope this morning for all of us that as we choose Christ, there's hope that is coming to remove the fog that could be lifted that the light may pour in to your life. The second thing is distance. 
as I look forward, I, I, I find that this is so difficult because oftentimes as Christians, when we do fix our eyes on God, it can seem that once we've decided to follow him and made the decision to look in his direction, that wow, because of how I'm living and what I've done, I'm really far away from him. And here's what I'm saying, he is near. That's what the scripture says, he is near. There's nothing that you've done or could do that would push God away. So that when you first pick the right direction, the distance may seem really far, but what I'm saying is don't lose hope. He's been standing beside you the whole time. But because of how we live, we go ahead and self-condemn ourselves, or the enemy whispers his lies to say, you're not close to God. But I'm saying he's close. He's very near. Oftentimes, I think that when we do this, we will limit God. Because we look in the right direction, and we now realize that he's with us, there is still a comfort that we have. So follow what I'm saying here. There is still a comfort in what we have. So yes, I realize that he is near, but I'm only willing to do so much. If I can live in my box, I'm good. Not too much risk, not too big of dreams. See, we limit what we think that God can actually do. We look at distance in a different way. I'm here, God, and I realize that you're with me, but there's no way you could take me from here to there. And I'm saying don't limit what God can do. If you've got hope, <laughs> There's, there, there, there's nothing he can't do. There's nothing he can't do. And I think oftentimes, I see, I listened to a, a pastor, this is probably two, three years ago. He was uh, 80 years old, and he, he was talking about all these things that he went through in his ministry. He said, you know, if I could have done anything differently, he said, I would have done two things. He said, I would have dreamed bigger dreams and taken bigger risk. He said, because a lot of the things that I decided to do were things that I could do in my own strength. See, you may believe that you could reach 100 people for the gospel. That's what you can do, but what can God do? We will limit God and we'll, we'll live in this box of comfort to say, yeah, I know that I'm going through struggles because that's what we heard last week. We'll go through these temporary trials. We'll go through these hardships. But if I can just live in the box, I'll make it through. I'm saying if you, will, if you just live in the box, you'll never experience God outside of it. We can't limit God. The third thing is clarity. And I think oftentimes it's hard for us to see clearly when we don't think clearly. It's hard for us to see the horizon or to see the hope when we're not thinking clearly. I mean, that's what the first verse out of that passage says, to think clearly, so that your mind would be ready for action, that you would exercise self-control. But I think clarity in sight has to first happen in clarity of mind. For example, Friday I was traveling to do a wedding rehearsal and there was a group of college students who gathered in my office and call, uh, went on a uh, conference call with them to talk about a college devotional that we want to start here at Kingdom. You know, Kingdom, we, we, we do such a, go a great job of, of reaching the young people. You know, we have, we have a devotional for our, uh, our youth, and we have a devotional for our congregation through Pastor Kevin. And, and we, we've been talking in our staff meetings about this group of college kids that's really starting to emerge. And, uh, and God put on my heart, man, let's, let's empower these kids to write a devotion. So this group of college kids gathers in my office, and I begin to explain to them what God was telling me in the direction that this devotional could go or should go. In the middle of that, I felt God telling me to slow down, a press up against me. And his, his words to me were, think clearly. And the way that I translate think clearly 
is to pray. That there would be clarity because I'm praying. So I said, guys, before we go any far, understand that there will be no decisions made today. We all need to pray about this before we go forward. See, I think for us to have clarity in how we're seeing and looking forward, we have to first spend time with him. Because there's often times in our life where our vision is often like the infant, as we've said, drawn in many directions, looking at many different things. Because we all have busy lives and we, be, we, we are drawn by uh, uh, things that hold our attention for a moment and then a moment and then a moment. But I'm saying, allow God to dictate those moments. So that when the moment comes and you need clarity, you would pray and the vision would be clear. The last thing is focus. Focus. Set your eyes on the prize. If you're someone that's taking notes, I think that's so important. Set your eyes on the prize. This may be more important than, than the other three, but the beautiful thing is, is they all go together. You gotta be focused. Focused. I, I mean, I, I think about a, a young man that I, I was really close with in college, and uh, it was amazing to me. When I would see him on campus, he was a, a devout Christian, great young man, played ball with him, and he, uh, every time I would see him on campus, he would be walking around like this, with his head down. And like, I would say hi, and he would never even look up. But then like at practice, he was the nicest person and everything like that, and, and I'm like, I, I, one day I asked him, I was like, dude, I gotta know, like, what's up with you when I see you on campus? Like, you're like staring at the ground, like in the zone, like, he said, I do that so my eyes don't wander astray. He said, I don't, I know that I'll be tempted to look at things that I shouldn't look at. He said, so I choose to stare at the ground until I get to where I need to be. Sometimes we have to focus on the hope by looking forward, seeing the prize that, ahead, that is ahead. Sp focusing our spiritual eyes is key in our walk of faith. The next big move is the movement. What direction, direction are we moving? Because see, it says in that verse, as you see the progression here, see, we're, we're growing up. <laughs> we're growing up. You see that picture there? We, we started with a look, and because now I'm looking in the right direction, I can now move in the right direction. I can move forward. I can move forward. And it's so key to see in that passage of Scripture because it says there, don't backslide, right? It says don't backslide into your own old way of living. Don't move back to your own desires. So direction is so important because a lot of times I will see people that, that are looking forward but not really moving forward. A lot of times we'll live our lives in a way that, that, that says, I'm focused on God but my steps don't really match my look. The way I'm moving doesn't match my eyes set on Christ. And I think a lot of times, that's why I think it was brought to my heart to share with you the, the, the man that's, that's, that's in the bar. He, he, there, the, to me, there's a glimmer and a hope. And, and I, I think that he wants to look at Christ. And he feels that he can't. But even when he starts to break away, when he starts to choose to move in a new direction, isn't there the temptation every time we try to move towards God, isn't there something that tries to pull you away? Always, always. See, because looking is one thing, but moving is another. And once we look and you begin to start to move, there's always resistance. There's always resistance. And that's why I'm saying I think that there's, there's times and situations that we deal with in our life that, Lord, I'm focused on you, but what I'm about to go through, this trial, is calling me back into the old way of living. And, and, and we'll get to a point where we'll say, God, I'll keep my eyes on you, but I need to fix myself with what I was once doing. And it's very hard to break through that barrier and move forward past that obstacle, that adversity that we face without choosing to have hope in Christ. That the victory would be seen in the cross. 
that the movement, the direction would be forward. Another important thing uh, about our movement is the control. And see, control is, is, is two part. Pace and rhythm. Pace and rhythm. I think control can best be seen in self-control. A lot of times, if you've ever seen a toddler like this one that's up here, and they're running, you can almost guarantee or know when they're running out of control. And you're preparing to catch them or they don't run into this or they... There's something to say about the pace of Christ. And I know we talk about this time and time again here at Kingdom. But we can't get ahead of God. He is in control. He is in control. He sets the pace. Lord, I'll move when you tell me to move. I'll stop when you tell me to stop. Well, Pastor, how do I do that? Prayer. 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 But I'm trying. I know. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. This isn't your home. This is your temporary residence. Your home is being prepared even as we speak. Don't lose hope. Pray, pray. And I don't want to get ahead of God. I want him to set the pace. When he says slow down, I want to be able to slow down. When he says run, I want to be able to run. I think rhythm has to come. And the way that I see rhythm is, is this beautiful dance that God leads, that Jesus has set the tone. He's set the pace for how we move in rhythm with him. That God, you've set the way. You've given me something to follow, your word, something that, that I can rely on and relate to. And I want to I want to I want to set myself to dance with you. I want to dance with you. I did a wedding last night, and <laughs> during the dinner, I wasn't sure where to sit. And uh, <laughs> I looked around, and I found uh, what I would say probably the most conservative people <laughs> that were there. A group of uh, older people that were sitting there. I went and sat beside this old lady. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> we had the most interesting conversation. Like it blessed my life. It, it lit out like we, we started talking about Jesus and like the rest of the table starts leaning in. And like I came back and the other part of the table was like um, was reaching down and, 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 and passing words down and we're talking and they, they said, uh, uh, our sister says that you're a very interesting man to talk to. <laughs> I wasn't sure how to take that, but I was like, okay. So anyway, but she was talking, and, and, and what she was saying was bringing such joy to my heart, giving me such hope. She was talking about this little old country church that she attends, and she said, the church that I attend values you so much. I said, that's awesome. Our church is trying to do uh, 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 the same thing and value the youth. She said, it's amazing to see that in our little country church that we're growing because there's hope for the generations to come, that they would realize that Christ is the one that's been set before them, that they can choose him and have eternal life. You know, and I, as I was leaving there, something changed for me. Pastor Kevin asked me this morning, I, I told him, I said, Pastor Kevin, I said, I really believe that this morning could be a special day in kingdom's history because of hope. My week was less than hopeful. Someone told me this morning, you have daddy eyes, bloodshot. <laughs> As I left that wedding, I began to talk to God. And I said, Lord, you're in control. I can't do this. And I don't want to put you in a box to say that I'm just going to make it through Sunday morning because I'm tired and I want to, I want to do this and I need to rest. No, I, I don't want to do that. I want to leave it all out there for you, God. But I want you to lead. 
I want you to say what you want to say this morning. And as I was traveling back, there was such a peace that fell over my life. I mean, this kind of hope that I hope that we could all experience as I was driving back from Deep Creek, the sun began to shine into my truck. And the sun that was shining on me was not the sun that lights the sky. And tears begin to well in my eyes, and I knew that God had this this morning. And that's why I'm excited, because that's what I'm saying. There's someone out there, there's a dad out there this morning that needs hope. And I'm saying to you, it's okay, let the sun shine on you. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, it's okay, just come to know him this morning. He wants to shine his light on you and put you in a position where you may well up tears of joy. Don't hold up bitterness against him. He loves you. He's near. Would you look forward to him? Would you start to move in the direction of our heavenly father this morning? Let him set the pace and start in the dance of life, this journey, this walk of faith with our heavenly father. The last thing of the three parts is to live holy, to look, to move, to live. To live holy, the first thing that I think of in holiness is dedication. It, and, and, and guys, I know that, that, that that's a, a word that we throw around and, and is used to uh, uh, attract people to it. But simply put, dedication is a commitment to purpose. That I would commit to a real purpose. That I would live my life for the purpose of Christ. That I'm not dedicated to, to the world and, and its customs and what it would have for me because I have a hope and I live in a temporal residency in a home that is not my home. I'm going to dedicate my life. I'm going to be committed to the purpose of Christ. So first step in living holy. The second is Devotion. Devotion, I, I, I know that that, that that can be seen as short for a devotional, that my life would be devoted to Christ, that I would be loyal to him only, that I would show my love for him, that the world may see that I have hope. And you know, I, I, as I think about this, that, that, was, that was what's scary for me this morning. Lord, are these people going to think I'm crazy? Because, I, I mean, I'm excited about this. I, I, I'm serious. When I say that your summer can be changed, kingdom can be different, I truly believe that. And I'm hoping that our faith would be unified so there would be a change not only in this church but in our community and in our state because of hope, because of the fact that we know that there's something greater than this. I'm devoted because I love him. I'm loyal to him. My obedience, that's my faith in action. That people would see by how I live my life that I have faith in Jesus Christ. The last one is mentioned in the scripture at the end there is reverent fear. I, guys, I really struggled with this one this week. I really did. And the reason I say that is because of this. And, and, and please don't take this the wrong way. Six years ago when I started for Pastor Kevin and working with the, the kids at uh, Morgantown High with FCA and stuff, there was a deep respect, reverency. There was a deep respect for not just authority, but someone that was representing God. So much so that that respect, I had athletes that wouldn't say certain things around me. And I respected that. And I'm, I, I'm just really struggling with this because I believe the world is moving away from that. In the last couple years, not, 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 just, not just at Morgantown High, but in all places that I go, People don't care that I'm a pastor. They say whatever they want to say in front of me. And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. You can insult me, but please don't insult my God. 
So really struggle with this one. Because there is to be a reverent fear of our God. And I'm just not seeing it in the world we live in. Yeah. But we are called to set the example because we have hope. We're excited for home. See, the excitement of eternity eliminates the need to live for the temporal. I think that's so key. The excitement that we have in, in, in the home that we're going to be in eliminates the, the need to live for the temporal. You know, I think about what Pastor Kevin shared that one Sunday where he talked about, about viewing eternity from eternity. I don't have to just see heaven from here. I can live it right now. I can experience it right now. You know, so when the question comes, why me? Why am I going through this? Understand that God has chose you to set an example of hope for the world to see. Your momentary trials may be a struggle, but you're just a temporary resident in a place that you will rest for all eternity. And eternity doesn't stop. It goes on and on and on and on. Our life is but a breath here. So no matter what you're going through, it's like the fog, here today and gone tomorrow. It's just a momentary thing leading you on the way to victory that you would rest in Christ. Came across this quote this week. I think this is really interesting. What makes earth feel like hell? It's our expectation that it should feel like heaven. Instead of looking to the situation we look to Christ. I mean, I think that's what we get caught up in. We get caught up in the situation and say, how do I fix this? And I'm saying the hope is not here. The hope is in Christ. And because there's hope in Christ, we don't look at the situation. I'm going to go ahead and look at him and say, Lord, how do I get through this? Lord, how do I pray through this? How do you want me to worship through this? How do you want me to fast through this? How do you want me to open your word and read through this? Because a lot of times we'll become consumed by the situation and we look to the situation instead of the victor that has the victory over the situation. See, we, 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 choose, we choose the flesh we choose the flesh because it does bring a momentary satisfaction. It brings the relief we need immediately. But what I'm saying is when you start to look towards the love of Christ, oh man. Now you're talking about something that isn't temporary. You're talking some, about something that is eternal. Change the look, you'll change the movement. As you begin to move, the life is lived in a holy way. A couple weeks ago, and I'll finish with this. A couple weeks ago, I was in the prayer corner. Here in a couple weeks, we're going to have a, 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 uh, the 540 Magazine come out and talk about what's going on in this corner when we pray every Sunday. And... Uh, this person came up and they spoke their request. And as they spoke their request, God said to me in my spirit, I'm going to heal that person. I'm like, that's pretty cool. It wasn't, I mean, nothing, but it didn't matter what I prayed. He was telling me, I'm going to heal this person. I'm going to do it. As we began to pray over this person, the affliction that was inside of the person came out in the form of laughter. I know that sounds crazy. You're like, what the heck kind of church is this? I'm just telling you, that's what happened. As we began to pray over this person, the person began to laugh. And as they were laughing in joy and in hope, the evil was leaving the body. Yeah, amen. Amen. And this, person this person comes back to me and says, I, don't, I mean, I don't know what to do. I, 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 I said, walk, walk in your healing. 
Walk in your testimony. Share with people that, 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 that God has made you victorious. Calling, she was, this person was calling people that had helped, her through, helped them through this process and saying, I don't, I don't need that anymore. What, what happened? Jesus healed me. I don't, I don't need that anymore. I got hope. <laughs> I, I don't need that anymore. I got victory. I don't need that anymore. I got faith. I got a God that's bigger than the things that are trying to call my name. I got victory in Jesus. I got hope this morning that lives will be changed. Let me challenge you this morning with this. Here we are, right? I'm praying that, that, that my prayer has been this morning that, that somehow through this message that your look is now forward that all of our gaze is now on Christ. In some way, we are looking at God. So, so here's the challenge. Would you move? Would you move? Would you move forward? And I don't know what that looks for you, like for you. Maybe this morning, you're gonna decide for the first time that I need Jesus in my life. Would you move? Would you move forward and come accept him? Maybe, maybe you're the person that's been praying, but you haven't really been le leading, letting God lead you in prayer. You've been trying to direct. Would you move and let him lead? Maybe you're someone that sits here morning after morning, and when we get to the response time in the service, and they begin to worship and sing song, and you can't help but want to move forward and just worship God. This morning, I'm saying, would you move? Would you step out of your seat? Would you come worship God in some portion of the sanctuary where you feel that you need to be because that's where God is calling you to be? Would you move? Would you move? Maybe that Sundays are good for you, but Monday through Saturday really isn't working out. You're really struggling. Here's, here's your move. Here's your move. Would you start a devotional? Maybe it's the one that Pastor Kevin writes every day. Maybe it's something else that God is calling you to read. But would you move? Because there's hope. And that hope is worth moving towards. Let me pray for you. Well, God, I've said what you wanted me to say. And God, I'm praying that this morning people wouldn't let how they feel change their mind about what you want them to do. That God, in these moments, if you are asking people to move, that they would move, God. Lord, I know, I know that I know in my heart when you were speaking to me last night on the way home, and you were allowing your light to shine in on me, you were telling me, God, that this word could change somebody's life. And Lord, I have hope that what you said will come true this morning. My faith is in you, God. I'm asking you to move by your spirit. To create an excitement in this place like never seen before God. God, you're using kingdom and you've called us in new ways every single day. And Lord, I just want to be faithful to the way that you've called me to speak this morning. And Lord, I'm praying that all of us 
or obedient to the move that you're asking us to take. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. The road to hope, Lord God, requires movement. And this is the time you've given us service after service after service after service to move. It's encouraging to see the movement in the room. And God, honestly, these symbols of bread and juice, these symbols of your body and your blood, cry for us to move. Think about that word that, that I read this morning, Lord God, about how willing we are to feed on the body. The body that you've given for us. How often we enjoy the feast. But within the feast, Lord God, there's also the fast. James and John said they were willing to drink the cup. You said, well, you're going to drink the cup, but right and left hand is not for me to give. They were asking for the feast. And you said, before the feast comes the fast. Just as I've given you my body, I also give you my blood. And if you're going to receive the feast, you've got to move on the road of the fast. So I pray today, Lord God, that as these go to either side of the room, and people begin to move, that they will move in the direction of hope. There's struggle on that road, and there's pain on that road. There's a battle on that road. Day after day, day after day. It's your road, Jesus. It's your road. It's your road that says, take up the cross. Follow me. In the taking, there is hope. In the moving, there is hope. And at the end of the journey, there is hope. It's a mystery, Lord God, but you're calling us in the midst of all of it oh, to see what Daniel has brought forth from your word today. See the hope. Choose the hope. Move towards the hope. Move in the hope. Thank you, God. We love you with all that we are. Give you praise. It's in the precious name of Christ that we ask for these things. Amen and amen. Would you move this morning towards hope?